my name is Kaya Tlo and welcome to our new show, which is called Live Bush Camps Chat. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for joining in to observe the African bush undisturbed and uninterrupted. My name is Del Kaya Tlo. And today we are testing actually a show that uh, involves our cameras that are being placed in the reserve called Pride Lens. That's where we are in the meantime. And Quenga, also the one in Cape Town, which is called Penguin Camp. So before I proceed, what I'll do is I'll see who's here with us. This afternoon, it might be late night, it might be early evening, it might be early morning, it might be during the day, but I thank you to join us on this show. It's new. So who's with us is Julie, Cookie B, Mars 54, we have Willow, we have Barbara, Arla Ramor. Rosalind, we have Mary Fawald, Hyena Boy, Sinek, Catherine, Ellie Girl, Irona, hello all. And some of you, your names look very familiar because they are my Facebook friends. And yeah, and uh, what I'm going to be doing is that uh, I'll play uh, the cameras, the live cameras, you can see on my screen here. We have uh, Krita Cam, we have Pride Lens HQ Elephant Cam 1 and 2, we have Hyena Den, we have Penguin Cam, and oh, Pride Lens HQ Elephant Cam 2 and the Giraffe. Because you can see I'm also sweating, it's very hot outside. And what happened yesterday, myself, Matt and VM, we've installed extra lights and they're causing this heat in the studio. And so what giraffe does, it, uh, they do come to the water hose. May I please have that to wipe my face because I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm very sweaty. Oh, it's very hot. It's very hot today. Thank you, Matt. Oh. Yeah, this is my FC cloth. <laughs> so I, I won't put this cloth far away from myself because I really need to make sure that I, I remove all the sweat. So what happens is giraffes, they usually go to water holes during this time of the day. It's very hot and then they have a drink. So what happens is you can see it's just a lone giraffe. So be, before it, it drinks, has to scan around to see whether they are there any dangers that are lacking around before it drinks. Because if you can see its positioning when it's uh, drinking, it's very vulnerable to be attacked by predators like lions. Because lions are known to to hunt giraffes. And you can see that the positioning and you can see the legs. What happens is that it a bit because there's a lot of blood going down to its head so it has to just shake the head a little bit so what happens is giraffes they uh, they tend to be on their own especially the males what they do is they uh, they move away from the females and they join other males or sometimes on their own. So you'll find usually you'll find the females in, a, in small groups or with the youngsters because they tend to form these uh, nursing herds. But you can also see a giraffe, a female giraffe on its own, 
with a youngster because they sometimes just want to be on their own before they get back to the group. Sinek is asking how many giraffes that I've seen before on that water hole. I've seen quite a few. I've seen quite a few, but I, I, I didn't count actually. But yeah, this water, this water hole is very busy because you can see it's, uh, it's an open area and what happens is animals, they like coming to such water holes because it's, it's much better view. You can see these predators from far and it's, they feel safe at all times when going to drink in such places. So if you can see Pride Lens HQ elephant camera, there's one and two. So what happens is just not far from each other, so we're just getting two different angles from this one or water hole. Rosalind is asking, how old are the giraffes? Wow, what a question. So it's very difficult to, to tell the, the exact age of an of a giraffe most animals unless if maybe you keep track of them like almost every day follow them from birth until they get to their other stage but i can't tell that giraffe is very young that giraffe is sub-adult now it's an old giraffe because those horn-like structures which uh, we call them the ossicons they will tell you uh, yearly, not the exact age but how old is the giraffe because you can find the male ones they are fold on top and then uh, the thicker those horns or ossicons are, the older the giraffe is. Catherine is, she's asking, Kaya, please turn the sound off from the camera. I can't hear you over the noise. Does that make sound? Does it make sense? Uh, Good, all good, all good, uh, Catherine. Thank you for that. So, which camera are we going to? Are we, are we still there? We're still with our giraffe. Let's uh, see what giraffe they view. Let's go to the giraffe. And actually, I want to talk a little bit about their, their pattern. Because their pattern is like our, our fingerprints. There's no giraffe pattern that looks like the, the other giraffe they have this these different patterns and sometimes you can differentiate giraffes if you see them almost every day because you find light giraffe or you find dark giraffe because there's this one big boy who's very dark so it's easier to differentiate giraffe sometimes if you spend most of the time with them yes thank you vm and some people they uh, what they do is uh, to identify giraffes. They get to a certain uh, area of a giraffe, like uh, the body part. Then they, uh, they seek for this interesting pattern. And then they will manage to spot that giraffe just by using that pattern they have, because they have different patterns. And while we are not, oh, the second one. Oh, look at that. So we can see that second one that just came in now. Now it's looking in a different direction because it has to make sure that they are all both safe. Oh, there's a third one actually. Whoa. So I can't really tell from the screen who these are these females or males, but I will try that because uh, in terms of size, the giraffes are much different from each other. Yeah, we're still struggling with the phone here. Thank you, Bavu. <laughs> six, six, seven, seven. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
Uh, Bavu didn't tell me the, the unlock code of this phone. Yes, thanks. So what happens is I want to show you what happens when we are away from, from the bush or when we are asleep or just taking a break from the bush because there's a lot happening while we are here in the house. So VM, do you have the clips from Pride Lens HQ? Let's see whether VM has some clips for us. Yes, we have a Nyala. Look at that. So I call this one an antelope with golden rugby socks because you can differentiate them from uh, kudus because of the, the coat color. They are dark brown, they are white, and also with those golden socks. Beautiful. So you can see Nyala bulls, they spend most of their time on their own or with the other females. And so also this one is vulnerable when coming to such places because there's no other Nyala that might be looking around while drinking for any dangers that might lurk around. So do you have the other one? Let's see, maybe we can have lots and lots of animals coming in. Oh, this critter can. Oh, we have a bird there. Oh, so we, we have three birds here, different birds. We have the one that's uh, taking a bath and the one just standing there. The one taking a bath is called a red-headed weaver. And this is a fork-tailed drongo, and I saw a uh, black tit. So this is what they do, especially just several times a day. They'll go to water holes, then they take a bath because they have to remove parasites that might eat their feathers or cause any, any diseases, like your ticks, fleas, your creepy crawly gross stuff that they might cause viruses and diseases and they might kill a bird and i've learned something interesting today that taking a bath and taking a, taking a um, a dust bath the one which, which is better it's the one uh it's a dust bath because it removes almost every ticks or parasites that's uh, within the feathers so but birds they like doing this while it's very very hot during a cloudy day or cold day you won't see them swimming mostly rosemary i miss this gentleman formerly known as Tolly. <laughs> yes i was once called Tolly, but i'm no longer Tolly. i'm kaya thank you for that and Sinek, Drongos are one of my favorite birds. Yes, they are also one of my favorite birds. But my favorite bird is called an African Hera Hawk. That's a gymnogene. And Drongos are so smart because what they do is um, they can mimic other calls. They, have, they can mimic up to 50 different calls. That's very smart. And they do that just because they, that's their survival skills in the bush. If they see a different bird or a different species that might have a snack, a drongo will mimic mostly a, um, a pale spotted owlet call. And then what they do is that particular bird or animal will drop off the food and seek for shelter while the drongo goes and pick the food. So that's very smart of a drongo and you will sometimes see them following a herd of uh, animals like your buffalo, it will follow impalas, it will follow giraffes, and sometimes it follow kudus. Because while they are moving, they, uh, they disturb insects, and then they get a chance just to snake on those insects. So, what camera are we going for now, Vian? Uh, playback. 
playbacks. Okay, let's go for playbacks and see what uh, these cameras has for us. Because it's so interesting because these cameras, they, uh, they record what or they see what we don't really see during that specific uh, time and day. What we have here, this is night time. Wow, we have a porcupine. So this is a hyena den camp. So that simply means there are no hyenas around. Because if there were hyenas around, that porcupine would have been attacked. So what they do is hyena like also snaking on those, but because they have to be careful of those quills because they are so sharp. So these animals are active at night, mostly, but you can see them during the day, but seldom, very seldom. So mostly you see such an animals who are active at night, which are called nocturnal species, when the level of predators is very minimal or low because they sense uh, those uh, predators. So that's why sometimes don't, they are not really active during, during the day. So what they do is they will come out at night. That's that, that's the time when they like feeding mostly because they feed on uh, bark, on roots, on tubers. And then before they go out, they have to be super, super, super careful and, 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 and show off there's no danger around. But the porcupine, it's so, it, it sometimes relaxes, much relaxes because of its curls. It can protect itself from, from uh, predators. Just like your art fark, it gets to be active at, at that time of the day. Hyena boy, isn't this the only live camera that's at an active hyena den? What happens is, as I uh, said uh, last week when I was on my live drive, hyenas, they don't use this one specific den. What they do, they have specific den sites around their, their home range or territory. And then they tend to move from that particular den site to the other one. So in the meantime, those hyenas are at this den that we didn't install a camera. Not that we don't want to install a camera there, but because when we, we went there and we, we've, we've noticed that there are no big trees around the den, so it makes VM's job very tricky because they have to design this stand and 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 solar panels and everything to keep this one box that will keep all the wires in or this stand that will just be look a little bit proper if i can say that because the trees that are, are near to the uh, den side are, are shorter and the bushes those trees who are much taller they're a bit uh, distance about 15 20 30 meters away from the from a den site. So what happens is uh, VM said he doesn't want to install that now because those you know those cables and stuff you have to we have to take them from that particular area you want to install your camera to that certain tree so an elephant might come and and pull the wire or maybe a giraffe might be passing and be caught in the wire so we don't want that. But very 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 soon because I've seen the, the stand, it's been made, and then very soon we'll be seeing all these active hyenas that we all love. And the other dance, what happens is you will see in those hyena den sites, you will see that they, they are hyenas one or two or three sometimes, they come visit and then they just go to the den site that's very active at that uh, particular moment. So not that we don't want to show you hyenas, we will, we, we, will we will show you hyenas, most definitely. And Matt will also be there to film everything. So what do we have here? Whoa, Krita came again. An African civet. So it's so interesting actually looking at Krita Cam because uh, I've noticed that Krita Cam is my most favorite uh, camera. Not like I don't like the other ones, but this one because it's more active and 
it shows us all these things that we don't really see while we are on a game drive. It can show you from flies and up to a leopard. A leopard has been spotted here, Krita Camp. This is beautiful. So seeing this African civet, it's actually nice because it's just living amongst, just around us. And I always, always see all these tracks in the morning, civet tracks, but we don't really see them. But having, oh, wow. It lost its foot there. <laughs> and having these cameras, it's, it's, it, it's such good because what happens is they tend to show us these life of shy animals. Because I'm... I'm Definitely for sure, if we, you could drive there with your game drive viewer, that animal will just move away from, from that and seek for a shelter or something because they are shy animals and they don't, they don't like um, vehicles. So it's not easy for, for us to habituate them that, like our animals that we always uh, see on, on our game drives like your lions, your leopards giraffes, your buffaloes. So these ones are very, very, very shy. Viem, is this one uh, video that this civet is making a sound? Because it was my first time hearing that mm -hmm. from a civet. Because it was doing a call. Yo, that ha 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 call. Yes, what they do, they do that call. That That's called a contact call. That's what civets do. But it's very seldom to hear that. It was my first time hearing that from Krita Kim. <laughs> Julie. She's saying civets' faces remind her of little of a little like a raccoon. They look more like a, a raccoon. Yes, definitely look like raccoons, but I think raccoons are more, 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 more interesting compared to, to a civet. Or maybe I might be wrong. It's just maybe raccoons, you, you see them almost uh, like, uh, those are not shy, very shy animals because uh, they are scattered almost everywhere where they are, they are found. And then a civet, it's always everywhere. We see tracks everywhere, but you seldom see these things live. So with the help of these cameras, we see all these be uh, behaviors. So we're still with our favorite camera, which is called Critic Cam. Oh, we have a squirrel. We have a squirrel. This is called a tree squirrel. You can see it's fluffy fairy tail. So they also quench their thirst, especially when it's it's a hot day. But because these are our residents, they tend to come to this uh, water hole, critter camp, almost every time. They're the ones that we see them mostly doing that. Oh. And this critter camp, actually, if we can see the size of that water hole you might think that it's very big because that's what i thought when i uh, I, I first saw it uh, that water hole critter came <laughs> before i went there actually i was looking at the screens uh, in the house and i thought maybe it was like this huge huge water hole but something like this this big right yeah this big 
you can say maybe how long not just like you know your your a4 paper that size is very small it's very very small yes let's see who's asking a question Oh, welcome home, Jason. We also have uh, eagles, eagles prey or eagle spray. Please help me with that. Are you eagle spray or are you eagle eagle spray? <laughs> Your some names are very very co confusing. So what do we have here? Let's go to, let me take, oh, oh, Krita Kim, Krita Kim, my favorite, my favorite. Oh, this is a dwarf mongoose. This is a dwarf mongoose, yes. Yes, the second one. So these ones, they live in a group. We call them business because they're always busy. A group of mongoose called business. And you see these small little creatures. These are vicious carnivores. Because they are seen attacking venomous snakes, big snakes, and they can also go for a black mamba. Can also go for pythons, but they have to be super, super, super careful when hunting uh, such species. Oh, who's, oh, there's this one guy coming there. That movement looks like. A mongoose, the slender mongoose, VM's favorite. And what I like about slender mongoose is that the way they walk, it's like a leopard stalking. You see their walk, it's different from a, um, other mongooses. Look at that. Looking for any dangers around before it takes a drink. So you, you, you see this, this, uh, this particular animal, it walks exactly like a leopard or a lion stalking. So it's built like that. So and these ones, these ones I respect them so much. I respect them so much compared to, uh, to the dwarf mongoose. Because what, what they do is they either live in pairs or you find them on their own and they are known to kill snakes like long thick snakes just one or two of these uh, slender mongooses very 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 smart and very fast have you seen them hunting i've never seen them hunting i only saw it on, on youtube but i would like to see them uh hunting especially a uh, a snake and then if you you hear birds sometimes making noise, making noise, and you don't see any leopard, you don't see any lion, you don't see any eagle. You must know. If it's not a snake, it's a slender mongoose. Birds don't like the slender mongoose. They don't like it at all. Ah, Sinek, you are pumping questions, eh? You are pumping questions. <laughs> Well, I'll try. I'll try by all means to 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 answer as many questions as I can because there's a lot of you here, and thank you for such questions. Because some I might I might not have answers to them. I will I will read through them, but I will get back to you for the answers. Or if you know the answer for a particular question that I might not know, you can just. Pump in the answer for me, please. So what do we have here? This is Quenga, right? Yeah. Quenga waterhole, yes. This Quenga. That's an impala. It's a stem book. It looks like why is it so small? This is a steel box. Yes, it's a steel box. I didn't uh, see that properly because my screen is very small. It's a steel box. 
And since steel box is so nice, also because uh, steel box are these animals that when they detect any dangers around, they will either freeze or flee. And they and when they are on their freezing position, what they do is they just uh, push back their ears and just uh, put them against uh, their big head or neck, and then you won't really, really, really see what what's what's what in the bushes that's why they're called stian box stian actually it's an afrikaans name stian means a brick a stone yeah stian makes it means a stone so it means it's a stone buck simply means uh when it's in on that rocky terrain and it sits down you won't really see because it will be like very similar to to the stones or rocks around it so that's their hunting strategy and what's so interesting about a stian buck is that you'll hardly see their droppings in the bush. What they do is uh, they dig and then they defecate and then they close. Or they defecate and then they will close their droppings. Not like the, the common diker. Common diker just defecates and leaves. And it's super, super, super territorial stian box because what they do is they, you will see them in pairs only when they are mating. Or during that breeding uh, season and then out of breeding season a male goes to go to his territory and the female stays in his territory but very close to each other oh are you enjoying the show are you enjoying the show please uh, out of scale of uh, scale scale of 10 just just tell me how much you're enjoying this show Jason, yes, a stian buck can see all these huge, huge, huge ears. And you, you have to notice that the females don't have horns, the males don't have horns. And do you know why? Let me tell you today. Most antelopes, if you, if you check most antelopes with a male having horns and a female not having horns, you will find that um, they, the females, they give birth. In, in thick places and while giving birth they don't want to be in a vulnerable position because of those horns sticking out and if you notice the the antelopes both males and females have, having horns most of them they give birth in an open area you see your hemspock mostly give birth in open area you see your roy hartebeest that's a red hartebeest they give birth mostly in an open area with a bit of grass so that the, the calf can hide there because they uh, they can fight back they will try to fight back from predators super interesting just like impalas impalas the females don't have horns but there's this one that have horns <laughs> so the females don't have horns and then they will go to a certain thick area and then they give birth then then they they come out with their youngster and most of these animals if we can check the during migration in Kenya in Tanzania, you find that uh, the blue wildebeest they give birth, and then they are youngsters. They just master the technique that a human being will master in one year. That's walking and running. So what they do is most of these animals that uh, they give birth in open air, especially the the antelopes. They are youngsters, they, they run so quickly because they have to follow their, their herd or their parents. When, whoa, that's a penguin. That one I didn't see. I was looking at the camera while uh, VM was, was rolling. <laughs> May you see that again, VM? Please. It's gone. <laughs> but that was a penguin, right? That's Cape Town. That's kept on because it's so interesting. Uh, that camera this morning I was with Matt and uh, we saw this uh, person passing and I thought we were only targeting penguins. <laughs> there are people coming on up because it's it's someone's uh, yard. So I think there are workers and some people living there, something like that. And so it's it's interesting seeing these penguins, especially seeing them laying eggs. But very sad too because those eggs are being stolen. Hopefully we uh, 
Brent and uh, VM will be going back to Cape Town and, and fix the the cameras there because there's this one that's skewed now. I don't know what happened there. If you have any clue of what happened to that camera because it's like it's skewed. <laughs> Maybe that mong mongoose is straight. I think it, it first took the egg. It took that egg. And then the second thing it did, it just went straight to the camera. <laughs> Apart from the back, then it, it just turned that thing over. Yes, Julie, females don't have horns except Edwina. Yes, but I haven't seen it, Dwina. I would, I would love to see that uh, impala. Saying something, VM? Oh, VM is saying it's gonna uh, roll that clip off our culprit. That's the penguin. Is there an egg there? We're still going to lay an egg. Wow, look at that. Here's the culprit. I don't like that guy, actually. I don't like it. I don't like it. Because, we are, because Brent, Matt, and VM left the camera with the egg there, hoping to see the penguins incubating cracking out the check and uh, seeing how they feed and, and how they survive during that early stage. But that predator decided to, to snack on that. <laughs> and it, and it's, it's, it, it's, very, it's very interesting because what happens is penguins and uh, normal, uh, and like other birds, what they do is if the female is not in the nest, the male will sit there and, and keep guard of of egg on, or eggs, and then vice versa. But they just left the nest. <sighs> so do you have any interesting clips, VM? Because, oh, the giants, oh, the giants, the giants. I call these ones my cousin because uh, we're sharing the name. The elephants, I'm close. You can see they're testing the water before drinking. Wow. It doesn't look as if this one is thirsty because it's just sucking the water and then just spray them out. Oh, it's drinking. So the interesting thing is that elephants, they can go up to three, four days without uh, drinking water, but when they get to a place where there's water, they drink up to 200 liters at that time. And what happens is if they're in a place where there's... Uh, there's water almost everywhere. They will go between 100 and 200 of liters a day. Because they do that because they eat a lot, a huge amount of vegetation. So water helps them to digest much easier. And have you seen the, the youngsters trying to drink water from, from a trunk? It's so interesting and funny too. Mass 54, thank you. Very cool show. We are rating 10 out of 10. So is this a trial to make this a separate thing from AWL, that's uh, Africa Wildlife? Yes. This show actually was given straight to me by VM. He said, Kaya, you have to do this. 
we have to try this and see if it works. And I, I think it, it, it really works. It's, it, it really works. And I love it because what happens is animal wildlife, it's more of a specific, uh, specific camera clips. And this show, which is called Live Bush Cams Chat, it's all about each and every animal that we see in this on, on, on these clips so i think it's 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 very much interesting to see beyond what we usually see when we're on a game drive it's nice seeing that small little thing that small little lizard that's that uh, monitor lizard to see how is the interaction between two civets or janets or two birds while taking a dust bath because you, you could see the other birds like a drone was giving a chance to a red headed weaver to take a bath first before it went in it's nice seeing those kind of uh, behavior and I, I don't know whether Yuka would, would also love to, to, uh, to do the show but I think she would love to Sinek Thank you, Painted Dog TV, for sharing these sightings to us. We really appreciate that. And we really appreciate your time looking at these uh, cameras on YouTube and giving us all the updates. And different time zones actually it really helps because when it's nighttime for us, for you it might be daytime, so it it will be easier for you to, to see what's happening during our sleep. Barbara, love this concept. Great idea. Hope it continues. Yes, it will continue. If you love it, if everyone loves it, it will definitely continue. Because, you know, you know we, we are not this very, very, very old uh, media company. We... We, we are still emerging, we are still emerging, you know, trying this and that, and then we're getting uh, feedback from you, it's very nice, because we know what to do and how to do something, and then what to add, and sometimes your inputs are so uh, important, because you give us something that we, we never thought about sometimes, and then we'll try it, and then we'll see how that goes. Wow, yes, what's happening here, we have impalas, and we have a... Yeah. That's a Velopius, yes. You can see that Velopius is alone there. It's not identity crisis there. What happens is these males, uh, Velopius, what they do is uh, they leave the natal herd and then they, they go and join other animals like impalas. They do that not like that they, they want to have fun with the impalas because safety in numbers. Remember, impalas are, are both grazers and, and browsers, so they don't have any competition between the species. So what happens is, out of mating season, testosterone levels are very low, so these boys, like your Velopius, they tend to stay on their own, or maybe in bachelor herd, and sometimes they visit the females. And then they eat and drink with these impalas. They know they are safe. Because what happens is, it's very interesting, because a leopard, if is stalking a bigger prey like a fully grown uh, Veldepiest, it rather goes for an impala because it's much an easier target compared to taking down a, a bigger prey like a Veldepiest. And so if, if, if you can see what's happening there, you can see the other, other impalas are drinking, others are, are looking around, so it's very safe for them. And if one impala sees or detects danger around that, it will buck, and then everyone will be away or just takes off from that, from this place, and then to a safer place. Cookie Bee, please continue this. It's awesome. Thank you. And Rosemary. Our pleasure, our pleasure, our pleasure. Wow. You see me 
leaning forward a bit because I'm looking at the computer screen and it's very small. I can see, I think, because I don't really see what's happening there because I have quite a, a, big, a big head and then the screen is very small. So I have to lean a little piece forward. <laughs> Yo, Matt, it's busy laughing here. Yeah? Must 54, two shows better than one. Yes. Jason, yes, that's a huge, big Valdepiest. Because remember, Valdepiest, actually now, because things are changing, not like the olden days. Remember the olden days, old, old, old days. I wasn't born. I, I believe my mom wasn't born too. Animals used to migrate from, from the south, southern African part to, to central Africa before these fences. They used to have like these huge migrations going on from South Africa to up in Central Africa almost every season because they have to go with the seasons. If it's dry this side, it might be dry Central Africa. So now, animals like your Valdepiest, you can see their legs, their front legs are much uh, longer compared to their hind legs because they, that they, are, they are athletes athletes yeah they're athletes so they they are made to to travel vast distances but now what happens is being in the kruger national park it's so it's so helpful to these animals because it's just more than a, a million hectares that's a huge area and last time i checked it was it was reaching two million hectares it was about to reach two million hectares and that's a huge uh, area. So it's nice they can move from the north to the south and south to the north. And then some, they decide to stay around because they are females, there's water, there's grass. And so they, they don't really, uh, they're not really bothered by that. But obviously because the population, human population grows over development, things change. And then we have to try as people or human species to, or human race to, to live with these animals. Because we have to have our space, and they also have to have their space. Another clip. Thanks, VM. It's HQ. Whoa, look who's there. Look who's there. It's very interesting. That's a mongoose, right? But the mongoose that we drive, not the... Uh, 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 oh, it's badger. Whoa, that's badger. That's badger. That's, that was... That's uh, Brent, that's VM, that's Victoria, and Bavu. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're taking a ride. So they were trying to, to find a leopard or, or lions because those are the specific places, especially when the sun's a bit down late afternoon. Check whether they are tracks or any animal movements, because what happens, animals, they tend to drink water at that time of the day, and then the, the predators come, they gather, they just sit and wait. I haven't seen any buffaloes. Do we have buffaloes, Viem? Whoa, we have a buffalo. We have a dagger boy. I call these ones dagger boy. Is this one with a short tail? You can see, you take a look, a look because we have these two resident uh, bulls, which they stay around here. This one has a short tail, and this one has like a uh, hunt tail. It might be the one, right? This one, it might be the one with a short tail because we have these uh, two resident bulls that they stay pride lands. HQ elephant water hole there. So what they do is because these bulls, they are so old, and they want this this grass that's around the water holes because they are much softer and green. So they tend to leave the the herd and come in and live in such areas, and they are super 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 dangerous. And what they do because they lose their fur. That's why that's why they, you see them in the water holes. And then they do this. Uh, mud baths and stuff because they have to protect their, their skin from ticks and sunburn and then 
because they can't keep up with the youngsters because youngsters they push them away from from the herd from the females so they tend to be like let's form our own group and leave these young boys alone but you sometimes see them with the herd when the herd comes this side and then you'll see them joining but they won't really move along with them and so what they do these ones they uh, drink water every day the buffaloes because uh, these are, are ruminants and then they have to fill their rumen with vegetation and then water has is needed because they eat this huge amount of vegetation and then the water helps with digestive uh, things there or digestive process digestion process yes so you don't want to meet these these boys on foot what happens is is better if you see them before you are seen. That's the art of tracking or following animals in the bush, especially following these <coughs> sorry these animals like buffaloes. It's part of the big five, one of the animals that are dangerous to hunt. So what they do is, uh, if they see you, they might sometimes chase you, or they run away from you, or they stand and watch you and watch your move. Or what they do is. They pretend as if they're running away from you and they will be coming back. So the, the, the art or science of tracking is number one. That's what I use because uh, I did tracking and uh, track academy. Number one, see before you are seen. You must check your wind direction as much as possible. Avoid stepping on dead or, or dry branches or broken branches or leaves and listen as much as possible because you might not see an animal like a buffalo but you might hear your your ox packers you know hearing ox packers they might be a dangerous animal around or it might it might be a giraffe or it might be an impala but sometimes it won't be those animals that they will run away from you it might be huge elephant it might be huge rhino it might be a huge buffalo bull so you must read your tracks carefully do not make noise use hand signals if you have more than more than one use your hand signals this is a rhino and then it's a lion it's a mane and then do this it's an elephant that's the science of tracking. VM, what do we have? Quenga again. Quenga water hole. What do we have? This looks like it's the evening time. This is our favorite friend. But I don't know who's this because I'm, I'm still a bit new and I'm still going through these animals actually this clan this pride land uh, hyena clan so this one if you know your pattern hyena pattern you can tell me who's who Sinek, let me read through your question because you you sent i think 10 10 15 questions in a short space of time let me let me let me let me answer let me go through the question didn't you had uh, rhinos before on some of the camps mm, not a, uh, I, I know of but I, I can ask the guys who, who have been here for quite some time at some point, yeah. yeah at some point they they did see the rhinos and uh, i would also love to see that it was during the day or data really or both like oh, okay bob was saying he has seen a, a rhino on cameras daytime and nighttime because remember other animals doesn't mean that if it's nighttime they are they are asleep they keep on they keep on eating they keep on they keep on browsing they keep on grazing because remember elephants they they can eat about 16 times 16 hours a day so what they do is they can he, they can eat the whole day and almost the whole night and giraffes are also spotted browsing during the night. Rhinos, they can graze or browse during the night. 
buffaloes some you'll find them buffaloes lying on lying because uh what they do is they eat a lot they, they don't they don't like moving around at night buffaloes what they do is because they move in herds so they what they will find a, a particular area then they will sleep there then you'll find them chewing the card sometimes if there's a, a nice grass there then they can chew but what happens is they don't like moving around at night only if they're disturbed by lions sorry vm wow it's an hour wow betty betty p723 hi guess i'm late again you're not late you can you can press replay so we can watch the show again and so uh, thank you for joining us and uh thank you for joining us because we're just testing the the show today but hopefully you loved it i can see your questions i can see your comments thank you so much for tuning in my name is still kaya Tlo, and my show it will be forever called live bush camps chat with kaya Tlo. i thank you hope to see you soon Thank you.